Good morning, everyone. How you doing? Hope that you had a good weekend. It's starting to get a little bit cold and uh, starting to experience a little bit of that that fall weather or late fall weather here as we continue uh, to go through this pandemic. And of course, we have an election coming up. A lot of different things coming up in our world, and we just continue to pray for everybody and each one of you as as we persevere through these these difficult times, but also times in which the Lord is calling us to grow closer to Him and, and to, to grow in hope and, and trust in Him as, as we support each other. So let's begin today with uh, looking at our Gospel, which is from Matthew. <clears throat> the Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. The Pharisees went up and plotted how they might entrap Jesus in speech. They sent their disciples to him with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are a truthful man, and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth, and that you are not concerned with anyone's opinion, for you do not regard a person's status. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar or not? Knowing their malice, Jesus said, Why are you testing me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin that pays the census tax. And they handed him the Roman coin, and he said to them, Whose image and whose inscription are, are here? They replied, Caesar's. At that he said to them, Then repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, we are given the leaders that we deserve. That's a, uh, if we want to look at the Old Testament, it really tells us that we're given the leaders that we deserve. Maybe not the leaders oftentimes that we want, maybe not the leaders that, um, that we would hope for, or maybe we, when we're struggling that we really need, but it are, there is the leaders that we deserve. We see throughout the Old Testament, that's in general what God does. You know, he sort of gives the people what they deserve, and then it can be a time for, you know, conversion for them, or it can be a time for them to enjoy uh, the wonderful leadership that they have. So the Old Testament shows us this. Now, this is either comes from either God's, what we call his ordained will, which is he decides that this is what I want, and he anoints his person and places him as a leader over a country or a nation, in particular Israel in, the, in this case, or what we call his permissive will. That is, I allow this to happen. Oftentimes that is what happens in this life. God does not cause evil, it does not cause suffering, but he allows things to happen. He gives us free will. And so we have that choice and so we get what we what we choose most of the time. We do get what we choose and God will work through us and work through all these circumstances because he's God, because he's, you know, greater than everything. He can work through any circumstance and difficulty. He respects our freedoms. And at times he will give us leaders certainly that help us. What we see in, in the first reading today, I, I didn't read that, but you can look at it yourself. It talks about Cyrus. Cyrus was a pagan king who actually ended up helping uh, the Israelite people when they were controlled by the, by the Greeks. He was the pagan king that, that actually helped them. And what we hear in the scriptures is the Lord says to us, I have called you by, by name though you knew me not. And he's talking to Cyrus and this to the prophet. So Cyrus does not know God, but God has called him to lead that particular, that nation of Israel. It is I who arm you, though you know me not. Again, Cyrus does not know God. Cyrus believes in multiple gods. He's a, he's a, a pagan from that time period, but yet he is doing God's will and God is working through him and God works through our leaders as well. So it is Caesar, so is Caesar or the Romans, those who attack, or as we hear in the scriptures or know from history, those who tax and mistreated the Jewish people and mistreated Jesus and his people throughout his lifetime, are they God's leaders? Are they God's leaders that he is allowed to be there? So Jesus is really offered this question to, to him by the, the religious leaders of the time. Is it lawful to pay the census tax? Is it lawful or not? Uh, so they're kind of trying to trick him here. This is right after Jesus was giving the Pharisees and the Sadducees a hard time because of their hypocrisy. 
and they give him this coin and they say, uh, should we pay this tax? He looks at it. Um, should we support an unjust or at times evil leader as the Caesars were? And Jesus says to them, as we hear in a famous quote, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, but to God what belongs to God. Christianity can be lived in any government, in any particular society. And we see that in the scriptures. We see that from Jesus in today's gospel. We see that also with St. Paul, who multiple times talks about the Christians respecting their emperor or the leaders of that time. And we've seen that throughout history. There's been many times in which Christians were, of course, persecuted and still are in many countries in our world. They live in Christian, they've lived in Christian monarchies, which is, of course, kings and queens which govern them. Not all of those kings and queens were bad. Some of them were very good. In fact, some were saints. St. Saint Louis was a saint. St. Saint Elizabeth of Hungary was a saint. Christians have lived as they are living right now in democratic governments like our government today. And we can live and we can thrive in that government and be an important part of that government. <clears throat> also in socialist governments, let's be honest, many of the European governments are socialist and Christianity is still able to survive there and at times thrive. Now communism, that's when we get kind of difficulty because Marxism really does not accept uh, religion as an option. I mean, it has to be the state above all, all else. And Marx himself calls religion the drug of the people. So communism really, as our holy fathers and churches said, communism is not, does not work with Christianity. But we see in St. Paul's writings, as I said, in the early church, that they, the Christians always said, respect your leaders, whoever it is, as much as possible, show them respect. They're your president, even if you don't like them, president, you know, even if they're not respectful towards us or whatever, we're supposed to be respectful. We're supposed to be on the higher plane, right? So as long as the law is not unjust, which is asking, and some laws we, we have in our society today are unjust. For example, abortion and, and other laws and, and can be unjust and wrong. We follow and we speak when we follow or we speak, we should always respect whatever leader that we have, if possible. And that's what Jesus did during his time. And we see that today, even though the Caesar, he knew Caesar was hard on his family and his people, but yet he shows a deference for the religious leader. The problem is, of course, when we have unjust laws or there is persecution, which hap is happening throughout the world. There's often, there's many governments in which Christianity actually is more persecuted now than it has been in centuries, believe it or not, in places like Africa, China, there's a lot of persecution over there today. Or are there political parties, sometimes we may put them above our faith, and that's not a good thing either. I used to kind of joke when I was in, we were in Pennsylvania that people in, in my part of Pennsylvania, they were first Irish, and then they were this political party, I'm not going to mention which one that was, but and then they were Christian or Catholic. So it was always, there was like a mix up of priorities there. They identified themselves first as whatever their ethnic group was. And then they identified themselves with their political party. And then only after that did they identify themselves as Christian. If we're really going to be Christian in name and fact, we identify ourselves first and foremost as Christians. And then of course we can belong to a political party if we want to. I mean, that's, but we have to always think and act first and foremost as Christians. That's what Jesus is asking. Render to God what belongs to God. Everything belongs to God. And God is the ruler over all. So Jesus asks us to give to God first, our first fruits. So as we enter into this could be difficult election season, let's pray for both candidates, both parties, everyone involved. Let's hope for a peaceful transition of power and also that... Uh, we may be able to respect one another, even despite our differences, and be able to always, you know, seek the common good. And that's what Jesus would ask us to do if he was here. He would always respect whoever's in charge, but at the same time, he would be calling us to live that Christian faith, that Christian faith which we have, which he's given to us. God bless you this week, and um, we hope to see you again next week. And in the, in the future. God bless you.